So let's take a moment to recap what we've learned in the last few videos. And I've written it in advance to save some time. So we've learned that the first derivative with respect to x of our wave function must be finite. And why? Because, because the string doesn't break as we're, as we're wiggling it. And we also learned that the second derivative of our, of our wave function, our, our function that describes the wave, also must be finite. And that's because you know, we, we can't make an infinite, an infinitely sharp kink in the, in the string. And then similarly, the, the first and second derivatives with respect to time must also be finite. And, and the first derivative is, is because, well, basically because a piece of string can't be in two places at once. And if, if, if it could, it would have an infinite derivative. So we know that the derivative must be finite. And then the, the second derivative also must be finite because, because if it wasn't, it would have a, that would mean that the force on it was infinite. And we know that we can't, can't apply infinite forces in real life. And so what can we, what can we do with these things? Well, first of all, If the second derivative, if you can take a second derivative of a function, you can always take the first derivative because, I mean, you have to take a first derivative before you can even get to the second derivative. So, so the second derivatives here, they contain the same, the same information and more information than, than the first derivative. So, so we'll just concentrate on these two things because they hold all the information and then and, and that will lead us to to where we're going. So we've basically come up with these two requirements about our about our wave function, our function that describes our wave. Let's see if we we can find some way to argue that they're related to each other. Because if they were related, we could possibly come up with an equation that that we know that our our wave function would have to satisfy that equation to be a real wave. So let's draw yet another string. Let's say pick I grab this this green piece of string here, I grab it and I yank it downward. I yank it downward. And when I yank it downward, I'm putting a force downward on it and and because of Newton's Newton's second law That means that I I am changing its second derivative with respect to time. It's 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 the second derivative of its position with respect to time. Because m and we know that a is the second derivative with respect to time of x. And actually again I'll I'll use y because that's that's what we're using for this position in this in this um, in this case. So what happens when I when I yank down on this piece of the string? Well, it it goes down, right? I'll I'll pull on it and and something like this will happen. And it should be more symmetric probably than I've drawn it, but we'll end up with something like this. So here you can see that that pulling down on it and affecting the second derivative at this point affected its curvature, which is the second derivative of position of of the x position along this curve. So here's here's a way that you know they've certainly affected each other. And let's think about one more example quickly. What if I what if I pulled not quite as hard on it, right? I didn't. I didn't pull as hard as I could. I, I. I. was gentle with it this time. You can see that. That when I when I didn't pull quite as hard, so its its second derivative with respect to time of this point was not was not as big. We we've seen that the curvature is actually also not as big. So just from sort of thinking about. You know our our intuition about how a string behaves. We've actually made an argument that these that these two things are actually not only finite, but that they're related to each other. So I'm going to start writing down an equation that will 
relate these two to each other. Keep using orange. So the second derivative with respect to x of our wave function, which is a function of x and t, equals second derivative of our wave function with respect to time for a wave function, which is a function of x and t. So this equation isn't quite correct because, well, these, you know, these, we've, we've shown they're related to each other, but not that they're equal to each other. So I'm going to add, add a factor over here. I'm going to call it a. And so, so we've, we showed that, we argued that these are proportional to each other. The, first, the, the derivative, second derivative with respect to x and the second derivative with respect to time. But we didn't show that they're equal, so we need to add this extra factor over here just to make sure that we're not claiming that we know more than we do. So again, we know they're proportional, but not that they're equal. So we need to add that extra a, this, this extra factor over here. So now let's, let's think about what a is. Let's try to Let's, let's try to figure that out. So oftentimes in physics, a, a very powerful thing to do is look at the units. You can figure out the units, then, then you have a good chance of, of getting a, a good hint about what's going on in your problem. So here, let's, let's do that. Let's look at the units. Since we have an equation, we know that the units on the left side and the units on the right side need to be the same. So if we figure out the units of, of each of these things, we'll know that A has to make up the difference. And then, and then once we know the units of A, that'll be a hint at what exactly A is. So let's start, let's start with this term here, the, the second derivative with respect to x. What are the units associated with this? Units? I mean, it's a derivative. What exactly? What exactly does this have units? What are the units? And to 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 sort of show you show you what the units of that are, I'll I'll scroll down. This will be sort of just on the side. This may be a review if you've if you've done physics with calculus before, but I'll I'll just write a full d here. So we know we we know this basic relationship that 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 the derivative with respect to time of position is the velocity, right? Velocity is how fast is your position is your position changing. We know that x has units of distance. But we know that velocity has units of distance over time. Distance over time. And so we found here that that this, this here, this guy, oops, it's not a very clear way of writing it. This must have units of one over time. And you can and you can see that, you know, there's there's a t in the denominator, so it, it makes some sense that this would have units of one over time. But maybe maybe that was obvious, but that was something that confused me right away when I first started dealing with things like that. So I thought I'd try to to make it clear, just in case it wasn't. But anyway, so we know that this thing, since it has x squared in the denominator, this is just taking the derivative with respect to x twice, so this has units of 1 over distance squared. 1 over distance squared. And then the same thing for this, for this derivative here. So let's see, I'll try to predict how much space I'll use. But here we have 1 over time squared. Oh, pushing the wrong button. 1 over time squared. So that's... These, these are the units of these, of these derivatives. And what about the units of, of y of our 
of our wave function, the function that describes our wave. Well, the units of, of our wave function actually depend on what type of wave we're talking about. In the case of the string, it's it's distance in the y direction, right? And and but you know, this this equation applies to other types of waves. If it were a, a sound wave, this would be the pressure as a function of distance and time. Or if it was a light wave, it could be the the electric field as a function of distance and time. So so we don't really know what these are. And I'll, what the units of these are. Or we could we could know in any specific cases, but 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 in general we might not know what this is. So but the good thing is that it is that it appears on both sides, right? So so the, these units we know won't affect the units of A since since it's on both sides and A won't have to make up a difference between these the units of these of the wave function because was it's offsetting itself by being on both sides of the equation. And so we know that to to make both sides of this equation have equal units, we have to we have to put the units of A here, right? And all units of A. I'll just put this in a box here. Just because you know this isn't A we're putting here. This are we're just making an equation out of units just to sort of organize the way we're thinking about how these need to match up. And so we can solve for the units of A just by multiplying both sides by the distance squared. And if we do that, we find that the units of A have to be distance, distance squared over time squared. So, whoops units of a units of a again a is our constant that's 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 relating relating the 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 curvature of the wave to to the acceleration of a point on the wave right so we know the units of a are distance squared over time squared. And those and those are the same. I'm sort of looking ahead at this point, but 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 they're units of velocity squared. Right? Velocity is units of distance over time. If you square the top and the bottom, you get the units of velocity squared. And so let's let's think about A in terms of the velocity of the wave. We know that if I pull down on this on this on this piece of string, if I pull down hard on it, if the wave is really fast, if if if, if so if A is really big, say say that well okay, say the velocity of the wave is really big, then the wave will be able to spread out really fast. So it'll be you know, I'll have to pull much harder on it to get the same amount of curvature. So let's see if that makes sense with our equation if we call a the velocity of the wave squared. Well if I if I pull really hard on it, this this term is really big. This term on the right is big because that's the acceleration. That's the force I'm putting on the on the on the piece of string. And then over here, if a is big, the curvature doesn't have to be as big to be equal to this side. If a is big, and this is just normal size that works for having a really big acceleration and and you can you can think about the curvature of how hard you pull and how fast the wave moves and how they're how they're interacting with each other and I'd encourage you to do that it might help you um, you know develop your intuition which is really what really a very powerful thing if you're going to go into physics to 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 you know, run through things in your mind and run experiments in your mind, just to just to try to help yourself really really get a good sense of what's going on. And so, if we call a instead of instead of a, I'm going to call this v squared because because we've argued that it's the velocity squared, the velocity of the wave squared. And then I'll rewrite the rest of the equation.
sorry, I, I paused it and readjusted the screen, so maybe it jerked around a little bit there. But So that's why that happened, in case you were wondering. So the second derivative of our wave function times the square of the velocity of the wave equals the second derivative with respect to t with respect to time of our wave function. And so we haven't necessarily proven this in a rigorous mathematic way. If you have a friend who is a pure mathematician or something like that or, or a very stringent fellow, they they might they might not believe how you've gotten here. But but we've argued based on physical grounds that, that this makes that this makes sense as a as a differential equation that our wave function needs to satisfy. So you could probably derive this from treating each point on the string as a small mass and saying that they're connected somehow and and how they, you know and and do do some strange thing of deriving this, but but uh, I think it's a better way to get to it, just to argue based on physical physical arguments that make sense and and sort of get to this equation. And this is the this is the equation you'll see in 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 classical physics textbooks that that describe waves. And this applies to a sound wave. This applies to like if this were if this were a sound wave, this velocity would be the speed of sound. Or if this was light, this would be the speed of light, or 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 whatever medium your or or lack of medium your since since light doesn't require a medium to travel through. But well, whatever the wave is, this is the speed of that wave, and this this will have units of of whatever that wave is is made of, whether it's pressure in a sound wave or electric field in in a light wave or, or any other kind of wave. So. Um, this video is a bit too long, but hopefully, hopefully, at this point, you have a you have a good intuitive understanding of of what the wave equation is. Uh, see you in the next video.